welcome to In Demand. I'm Trudy Kerr. And I'm Jane Dennis. And tonight we are going to be talking to some successful working mums. Here at In Demand, we've spoken to some amazing women over the last few weeks and noticed that many of them are the primary care providers for their children. So tonight we dedicate a show specifically to that topic. Absolutely. This evening we are joined by the wonderful Mandy Bahaja, mother of two, policy coordinator and local councillor, and the fabulous Nikki Vella de Fremo, mother of five and accomplished lawyer. First up, we speak with Mandy. Good evening, Mandy. Thank you ever so much for coming on the show. For anybody who doesn't know who you are, hasn't met you, tell me about your work and your career. What is it that you actually do? Well, um, at present, I, am, I work in, in policy coordination. Okay. Um, I'm a policy coordinator within the Ministry of Education. Okay. It's a very interesting and rewarding job. Which I'm enjoying very much. And Trudy said, "Sorry, oh. you already." <laughs> Trudy said you were a local councillor. Yes, 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 I'm a local councillor with the with the Saint Paul's Bay uh, locality. Okay. I've been a local councillor for four years now. My second term. That mm -hmm. sounds like that's a lot of work. It is. It is. I it's mean, all time, it's time, all time management for right. me. For <laughs> me, you know, everything has to have its slot. <laughs> yeah. And now yeah, we will do this. Yeah, like that. Okay. So you, you've taken on addi additional responsibility to your work. Yes. Before you had children, uh -huh. you had a career and, and a job. Did you think that life would change after you had children? Did you have a did you have a view what that would be like after you had children? Well, I had. Uh, you know, I've I've always been ambitious. So mm -hmm. it's my kind of you know I'm not a kind of person to just sit still. I'm a bit hyper, so I tend to. I tend to take on sometimes more than I can manage, yeah. so that's Ooh. a problem I have. But um, but I like being busy. I like contributing, and I'm I'm also in the, a volunteer with the community chess fund. That is a post that wow. I really really enjoy. I really enjoy that. I. Uh, but isn't that true? When if you're that sort of person, if uh -huh. you are, are ambitious, busy just gets busier. Yes. And that's yes, okay because, yes, yes. as you said, it's about time yes. management and making exactly. sure that you fit it. You know, there's your... always time for the kids. Right. Okay, the kids always come, mm -hmm. come first, but at the same time, I want to show them that they can achieve, they can do other things. You know, I take them with me a lot of, to a lot of events. I take them with me to council meetings, to voluntary work. And this is interesting because mm -hmm. we were discussing, I mean, we had a long um, chat about this show before we came here this evening. And that's largely because I'm actually not a mother. So we've got three um, mothers this evening, Jane is as well, and you're all working mums. So for me, I've got a ton of questions. But one of the questions mm -hmm. that you've just raised the point of, aside from the sort of the remuneration, the money aspect of being a working mum, mm -hmm. and I think you've just hit the nail on the head, it, are there other benefits to your children that you are a working mum? Yes, I, I mean, I think, I've taken them with me to the office for a couple of meetings when I had, I had no other options, and I don't see that as a, I mean, I see that as rewarding for me to show them where I am at work, to show them what I yes. do, and I feel pride when my son refers, let's say, we're walking in St. Paul's Bay, and so me, he tells me, Mom, there's some uh, grass growing out of, why don't you ask them to fix it. <laughs> I mean, okay. He does. That's know, your he, job. He, yeah, he, he notices things. And he, told me, he tells me, like, oh, I would suggest doing this and that for the local council. So, you know, they're... How old is he? He's nine. He's oh, nine. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. Wait yeah. till he's 15. Oh, my God. <laughs> He'll be doing it himself. So on that point, then, you've taken your children to work and to the office. And these are the kind of things that I think perhaps people get a view about what a working mum uh -huh. is and that sometimes they need to call on favours or they need to bring their children to the office. Before you had children, uh -huh. did you anticipate um, that the amount of change that you would, ha you would go through? And were people at work different to you after you had children than before you had children? Um, to be honest... I didn't see that much of a change because I, I moved along depending on my circumstance. Okay. But I feel um, if children are not welcome there, then I don't want to be there. Mm. You know, mm. it's a one thing. I mean, now mine are nine and uh, six. So they're kindly well behaved. You know, with my son, my son is more adaptable to, to situations. But, uh, and obviously there are certain situations where I, I can't take them. Yeah. But uh, I, think, I think the perspective is changing now, in a way, to, to the better, because it's more acceptable for a mum 
to take her child to work. I think it's changing in a way. But even not taking your children to work, mm -hmm. do people think that, oh, you're a mum now, so therefore, you know, you can't, do you get excluded from things? Are you glossed over with promotions? Do you get the same opportunities that you would have done before you were a mum, do you I think? Didn't, I didn't experience that in particular. I've worked in the family business for a long time as well. So, you know, I had, a, I had it easier mm. than, than most people, most probably. So, uh, but I still um, wanted to give my share. I, I've, I've always wanted to progress, so that was part of, uh, of who I am, mm. you know? And uh, for a while when the kids were smaller, yes, I used to feel, I felt a bit um, cut off. But then you build up a different mm. repertoire, different, different agendas, different things. I mean, obviously, I, before kids, I used to probably fill up my social life more than I did now. Yes, yeah. Nowadays, I fill, them, I fill my life with other stuff that is more adaptable. And I, from what I understand, and again, as I say, I'm, I'm not in the same position as you guys, but from what I understand is that once you have children, there's a huge social life that associates with having children as well. So that, that mm. there's a sort of, your, your kids are socialising, therefore you're socialising with the social circles surrounding your children too. Yes, yes, yes. There's That's, a lot to pack in there. Yes, I mean, my kids have more parties than I do nowadays, yes. you know, but... <laughs> Happens, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way it's wrong. Is. That has to be wrong somehow. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is. So, in a way, when the kids have a party, yeah, okay. So I get two hours to chat with the mums. So it's, it could be fun as well. You just have to adapt. Eh? Yes, you have to adapt. You mentioned something I'm really interested in. You, you mentioned back there that your kids are well behaved. You take them to the office. Not, um, not regularly. I don't get. <laughs> when I'm stuck, not to the office. <laughs> <laughs> they take them down the mines or something. <laughs> um, as a person who is in a working environment, who again is not, not a parent, how do your colleagues respond to you bringing your children oh, to the lovely. office? I'm very lucky with my colleagues. See? Wow. Yeah. Everyone's like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you were talking about this before the show and I was, I was I, sort of... I don't take them regularly, so don't get me wrong. Okay, okay. I don't get it done. <laughs> it's not every Friday afternoon. No, you no, were saying no, things no. like, you know, I have to leave to go, you know, for a dental yeah. appointment mm. or, you know, he's sick, I leave, something like that. Yeah. These things, I mean, I don't think these things do happen regularly, but they do happen. They do happen. And your colleagues are cool with I mean, that. only, yes, but yes, things yes. like that only have to happen a couple, you know, one or two times, and you start building a, a perception. So I have been uh -huh. in situations in the past where, and this is where I'm looking at it from a completely different angle, where, you know, a mother has said, oh, I've, I've got to take the kids to the dentist, I'm not going to be in on Tuesday, but you've got a meeting or something, and you know that you're going to have to cover for mm -hmm. them. And I think that's where that mm. interesting kind of... That's why I'm asking, mm -hmm. have your colleagues been accommodating? Yes, yes. Mind you, most, most mums, if they're like me, I'd rather go for a meeting than go to the dentist <laughs> with my child. <laughs> so, you know, I would bear, in mind, <laughs> bear in mind that for them, it's probably they'd rather come to the meeting than go to the dentist yeah. with the child. And sure. you know what? That's come through quite a lot with the conversation we've had with a lot of women have said, because we've been talking about mm -hmm. their roles primarily on this show and people have been saying, I think I'd rather, I'd rather work. And there's a sense of guilt around when they say it, don't yes. they? Sit here yes. and say, I shouldn't say it, but actually I do prefer to go to the Absolutely, meeting or yeah. I do prefer to yeah. go to work. Yeah, do you, do you suffer from guilt? I used to. <laughs> I still do sometimes. <laughs> but I don't think it's... It, I think it's something that we have maybe our small teas because we have a different... the kind of family life upbringing. But um, I think that should gradually change, even in, in people like myself. I do feel guilty sometimes when I'm at the office later, but at the same time, I, when I'm with them, I'm with them. And, you know, I look forward to Saturday nights when we're together, when now we go out and just, you know, I'll be just one of them. Mm. So it's, uh, I think it's not the amount of time, it's the quality, quality. time. I know yeah. it's been said and it's said and said, but I think that is, that is the, the, the gist of it, you know? Yes. Do you think that there is any impact on, on your children do you think aside we talked about mm. them experiencing um what it's you know the work environment mm. and obviously well i'm assuming that there's sort of some sort of um monetary involvement as well but mm -hmm. do you think that there is negative impact on on children how do you combat that there must be isn't there something i mean there, again there i'm be. saying for a very naive point uh -huh. of view because i don't have there there must be some kind i mean Probably they'd be happier if I'm home to mm. cook them dinner every night. Mm. 
But uh, then again, we can cook dinner every night when I come home. You know, they can help me out in that way. Mm. Do you think so, you'd, be, you'd be? Do you think you'd be the same mum that you are to them no, if I, you weren't working? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That's really wouldn't. interesting. I don't think I would because, as a person myself, I like to be achieved and, and fulfilled, mm. and uh, and I like to pass that on to the kids. Mm. I like to. I mean, education obviously is important. It's it's where I work, but I. I really, really like my kids to be brought up with social conscience as well. So I want them to be, you know, all around us and be able to talk to people when we're out, interact. You know, I think that I can give them that for maybe since I don't give them as much time as if I were a full time mom, but I can give them that other option not mm. option it's you know what i mean mm. it's just something else i can give them that they can yeah. learn to be i mean when we do volunteer work i do volunteer work with the community chess fund and uh, they come with me sometimes i have meetings in the palace and they're quite happy that they're coming to the palace yes. and you know it with uh, so you know it gives them that other perspective on things and i want mm. them to be able to be children that uh, that, that are ready to do volunteer work because I think it's very satisfying. Mm. You know, all these other... Um, so you're giving them an awareness yeah. that otherwise they wouldn't have. And certainly my, my mother mm -hmm. didn't work, never worked. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was, a, there was a lot there that maybe she didn't contribute that you can mm -hmm. through your, your working role. Um, and you're actively encouraging your, your children with that as well. So you take, you take them to the palace. I mean, yeah. do, do, they, do yeah. their friends get to go to the palace? <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. I That's think. really cool. Well, you that go, see, go to me. school and say, I went to the palace with my <laughs> mum last night. So I think your point, I think your point mm. is, is that you, by being there all the time, it wouldn't necessarily make you the same mum that you're mm. there but that's when you're not. And that's me, how, it works it's the same person. It's, it's, it works for yeah. other, I mean, mothers. We're not yeah. all the same, obviously, but that's Absolutely. the way I am. I am that kind of person mm. that I need to be kept um, quite uh, busy myself. So. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And this, we were talking about this when we were talking about opening the show and, and we, I mean, Jane and I talk about these issues and I think it's really important for me to remind myself as well as anybody else, and, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, that primarily you're a woman and you're a human being. Then you may be a mum, then, you're a, then you are um, a counsellor yeah. and, uh, and a coordinator mm -hmm. and those things have come down the list, but primarily you are your own human being. And, yes. and yes. so coming back to Jane's question, uh -huh. I guess if you weren't able to fulfil that work desire, exactly. then you wouldn't be able to bring the same passion to your, to your home life as uh, well. That, I, that, that makes sense. Exactly no, nicely summarised. Thank yeah. you very much. If you I don't mean to put words in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we're done now. put it all together. That's, that's it. Perfectly. That's it. We've managed to explain it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. it's, but it, but it, it's a truly, it. It, it's been ringing through with everybody, every guest that we have who's been yes. a working mum who basically said, I just wouldn't be the same mum. I wouldn't yes. be the great mum that I am. Mm. Mm. Listen, absolutely fantastic talking to you. We're going yeah. to talk a little bit more in a minute. Uh, we're also going to, to meet our next guest. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, today. don't go anywhere. I mean, you can go make yourself a cup of tea or anything <laughs> that you want to do, like that glass of wine. Um, but do make sure you come back and join us in just a few minutes, and we'll be talking more about working mums. Nikki, great to have you on the show Thank as well. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely fantastic. Um, mother of five. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still shocked by that. Um, listen, you are a very accomplished lawyer, and as far as I can understand, that is a very, very time-consuming role and, and demanding job. Have you ever considered... Was there ever a point where you thought to yourself, you know what, um, I want to pursue a career and maybe I won't have children because you thought that you might not have children because of your career? Well, actually, before I had children and before I got married, I was a very selfish person and I never thought, and I had my dogs and I thought, well, fine, that's it, I'm sorted. You know, I can have a life, it's fantastic, love my husband, live life to the full. And then, perhaps, I don't know, some biological clock or something sort of ticking, and I wanted a baby. And um, obviously, being a lawyer and working, my husband and I work in the same firm, so we used to work till two in the morning, go home and cook together. It was just fantastic. It was so really you easy. worked together as well? Yeah, but he doesn't work in family law. OK, he OK. He works okay. in a completely okay. different sector of law. And um, anyway, so 
my first child, Alexandra, came along and it changed my life. I mean, from day to night, it was completely different. Shortly after, I had my second child, Francesca, who we call Chicky. And obviously, I had to um, start adjusting. Um, in fact, I had suffered from postnatal depression after I had my second child because the change in my lifestyle, which was um, being working constantly to find myself with two young children to handle and little help, and well, my parents helped me, helped me a lot. But obviously, I, was, I really wanted to be a hands-on mummy. Right. And obviously, there was my career, which I, which I loved. Okay. I was the lawyer of a poch. I was um, the chairperson on the board of appeal of adoptions. So I had, there was a lot going on. Right, right, right. And, um, but obviously, with two children, then three, then four, then five, <laughs> something had to give. And obviously, really? I had you to. Yes. <laughs> and not only, I have lots of pets, because you say, I, there's never enough going on in my That's house. That's a big family. It's a big family. We're just, you know, like Gerald Durrell, you know, we're just my family and other animals, as we call ourselves. <laughs> so, um, basically, something had to give. And it wasn't going to be my children. It had to be my career. I made a choice. It wasn't an easy choice. And there were days when I regretted it because, um, uh, you know, there are days when you feel brain dead. When you do, say, ABC and do homework and you feel like a taxi driver. So then I had to find a happy balance. There was obviously there were other people in the in the office who made good for my cases. There's another lawyer who actually does, works my cases. I go in for the more complicated cases, and when right. there's to go for the kill, then that's when I go. And it is <laughs> Bring the her in. biggest like breath nervous. of fresh air I can ever have. And um, but obviously it has to be restricted. And my clients, when and when I have clients, I advise them. I say, look, you know, if I have um, a situation where I have a lawsuit on that particular day. And my, one of my children is sick, then I'm sorry, I can't turn up. I'll have to send a substitute. And Gosh. they have to take me on Who in you that are? way. And they do. Many do. Wow. And do you know, think wow. Because wow. obviously I... Do you, do the, to have being a mum of five then, has that made you a better lawyer, do you think? I don't think it make, made any no. difference whatsoever because being the lawyer of a porch, um, I dealt with obviously the worst cases of sexual abuse and domestic violence. And um, actually, it made me a more paranoid mother, at least with my first child. So when I used to send my child to school, I'd just come back and say, Mommy, you know, I have a pain here. I said, oh, my God, oh, my God. And my husband used to say, Nick, don't, I mean, don't start imagining things. And it was obvious, you know. I had to, make a dif I had to differentiate between my work and that it is not mm. all over the place. And it is not. I mean, sexual abuse you, is not all over the no, place. No, did you choose to work in family law and the environment you're talking there about being in it, working with a podge and, and being on the Board of Appeal for um, the chairperson of the Board of Appeal for adoption? Was that a conscious effort to work in that field or was that pre I used to work in criminal law. Right. I worked in a firm which specialised in criminal law. And I just lost the, the buzz, I guess. And um, turning into family law, turning to family law and actually helping people was um, gave me such a, a positive feeling that um, I mean I just loved it. And forgive me, that was before children. During. You did that during. During. A pot was before. Yes. And then during. Um, I mean, a pot was be before, and then during my first child. But um, and then I had um, chairperson on board of appeal till I think um, a few months ago, mm. uh, six months ago, or something like that. And has it influenced your? Sorry, has it influenced your outlook as a family lawyer, being a mother? I wouldn't say no. so. I actually, um, like I said, it's um, being a mother is so important to me. And the fact that I have five and even dividing the attention towards each child, um, they know, for example, the children. I mean, for example, because you love Chris more than you love me and you love Ben more than yes. you love me. But you prefer the boys. I have two girls and three boys. And um, so I have to really, really... Um, like you said, you know, you have to really make sure that you have enough time for each child. But then, at the same time, you have to have enough time for yourself. Mm. So I make sure that I go to the office on certain particular days to keep myself sane, <laughs> because otherwise, <laughs> I, I would go crazy. So, but I, having said that, I've taken the children to court when court was closed and shown them around, you know, the, 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 the aulie, the halls and shown them where the prosecution stands and where the person accused or where there's a judge or the superior courts and the inferior courts. And they've seen, you know, lawyers and tow guards. So see where mommy and daddy work. You know, mommy, you know, we'll pass the courts. Mommy, where you and daddy work? 
So, um, but that's it. But then they also learned litigation through, because my husband's a lawyer too. So the way we talk, my, my mother sometimes says, okay, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> enough we're, we're actually talking, you know, we're not arguing. But it's litigation, so the children really know how to answer, answer, not answer back. Mm. Because they're very well behaved, actually. I mean, with five, you have to be quite regimental. But um, they provide evidence they for know arguments to... that they've had. Yes, they really <laughs> come and show you. For yeah. example, today I told my, my youngest son, Nick, who's three, I said to him, Nick, I said to him, why, why aren't you wearing your underwear? He said, Mommy, because I couldn't find any underwear in, um, in the drawer. He told me, so I put on a nappy. He said, because you told me to put on underpants. And I said, damn, this boy is three years old. He's already answering back, you know? <laughs> but he gave me a With really a justifiable answer. answer. You, know? you created said, monsters. Okay, <laughs> monsters. I, that's good. It's a good thing. But you, said, you touched on something. You were talking about um, you decided that the, 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 the biological clock kicked in. You decided to have a child. And then it sounds like you went through I became addicted. <laughs> I became addicted to having babies. Is there not something else you could have gone I for? promise you, I just love, and I love a big family. I mean, myself, there's only my brother and myself. Mm. And um, so when I had one, it was okay. And then, you know, two. But you mentioned, I mean, I did touch on a point that, that Mandy mentioned as well, which was that sh she is a better mother because she stayed with work. And that fulfilled her and and so that if I'm right in thinking you mentioned that there was a point where you said okay being a full-time mum is not going to bring the best to my family I need yes but my children come that. first my children okay. I will not I will there are certain days when I will go to the office and I will set those particular days around my children's needs mm. because they come first and I believe that I'm there to cook their meals. My mother was a working mother, mm. and I missed that. Right. So it could very well be the counter effect of obviously my upbringing. But at least when I come to to die, I would rather my children say, "Oh God, my mother was such a pain. She was always there, seeing and bossing us and seeing." Her. Rather than you know you saying, you oh, there. "I wish my mother was there more for myself." But Nikki, mm. my my question would be. Um, after you've done a full day at the office, you've done, you've been there, but you've I done don't do a full day or, you've, or you've been to the I office have to, and you've I have had the... To, I have to assign. If I spend a whole day at the office, mm. it is impossible for me to go okay. home and deal with my children. Impossible. Because there are too many of them. Right. So I have to do my half day, I have to assign the work to be done, and then I have to work from home, which is much more difficult than having to work from the office, because oh, if you have course. to write a legal letter, which will take you... 15 minutes or a complicated letter or a separation contract or whatever. Every five minutes you have mummy, 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 mummy. Every five minutes, every two minutes, it's perpetual and it's coming from five. And even when you're, being, when you're at home, you know, you tell them, listen, prepare your uniforms. Prepare your uniforms, prepare your uniforms. And nobody obeys, nobody listens. You know, it's okay, because she's going to be busy with somebody else doing homework with, with the two older ones and we're st I'm studying with the mm -hmm. others. So the other three think that they can destroy the house. So then you have to go up and see what the <laughs> others... And the other, the meet and the others go on their iPods and I'm, they're, not, they're not allowed to play on their iPods during the and week. this isn't even so all this the is animals. So this is going without, I mean... And then, then, obviously, now to add insult to injury, which... Because I, I just, I love this chaos. I got a puppy. <laughs> you know, because the time for me to have another baby sort of now lapsed and I'm not going to have more children. So I got a puppy. Ricky, <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah, it's time to start. I mean, I, I wanted to ask, and I think you've just, you've absolutely hit the nail on the head. I was going to ask, I, you know, I don't have, I keep mentioning this, I don't have a family. I get to the end of the day, I come home, we were you talking about this as well, I come home and I might, you know, relax, make myself a cup of tea or a glass of wine and I have that little time to myself. And I find that, you know, I'm getting back and I'm absolutely exhausted. How on earth do you get back and then have the energy to, be, to deal with being a full-time mum as well? Look, there are days, there are days which are so... I mean, when you actually... I mean, I feel broken. I, I just sit down and listen, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me because I'm absolutely exhausted. And there are days, I mean, obviously I'm human. I, I mean, mm. there's, a, there's a limit to how much you can do and how much you can actually try and juggle. And when there are days which, which, which are bad days, I mean, we're women, you know, we, we do have our bad days which mm. turn up and, you know, you can't really control it. When something goes wrong and you're worried about a case or, or something, mm. you know, then you have to deal with the children mm. because the children mm. have their demands, perpetual demands. Mm. I mean, there are bad days, I just think, look, just don't talk to me. Mm. I'll be sitting next to my husband and they come, mommy, and then there's this man, he's your father, yes. speak to him. Speak to, that, speak <laughs> to him. this man here, right next to him. <laughs> 
know? And um, so, so there are days when, yeah. I, when, and they're bad, bad days. But most of the time, I mean, my children give me such satisfaction and such fulfillment. I mean, there are days sometimes I catch myself screaming at them mm. and I catch a glimpse of myself with my face sticking out. <laughs> I say, mm. And they're not scared of me. That's the whole thing. They're not, because they know it's mommy. It's just it's mommy the again. Scared. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. We're going to come back in just a second. Yeah, I'm having a whale of a time <laughs> talking to you ladies. How absolutely wonderful. We're going to come back in just a minute. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, make yourself a, another cup of tea or another <laughs> glass of wine. Glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and join us in For just sure. a few minutes. Welcome back to In Demand, where we're speaking to two wonderful working mums, Nikki and Mandy. Thank you, ladies. It's been fantastic talking to you. And I'm trying not to sit here nodding, going, yes, yes, I know <laughs> what it's like as well. Um, one thing I noticed, I've lived in Malta for nine years now, and when I came here with my children, uh, I didn't intend to be here for nine years. I intended here just to be for a year of maternity leave. Um, and then I started work again, and what I noticed was there wasn't a lot, uh, an infrastructure for people to go back to work and uh, for childcare for, for mums. Um, it's better now, and I understand that. Much but better. Yes. It's a much better in yes. situation. But how important is the extended family network in child rearing for, for working mums in Malta? I think it's very much, I mean, it's still quite the classical. Yeah, set up, it is. It is. You know, with, I the, mean, with the great, with the grandparents. It is. But we have to. I mean, I am the lucky one because I do have a lot of support from my mom and my dad. But we have to keep in mind that it's not always so easy for everybody. So, but but I think the infrastructure is gradually changing. Yes, yeah, to adapt. Much. It's adapting. There are childcare systems. Mm -hmm. There's the possibility mm -hmm. of working home. Yes. You know, there are certain yes. amounts of hours which have to be given in, and there are certain projects. So, that like that, you have um, the ability to to work from home. I mean, that's, that's a very, very good thing. And so that's, at least that's the growing, income keeps it? on coming it's in. Growing. You don't have to stop. Mm. It's not and perfect yet, obviously. There's a lot of work course, to be done always, for it. Because there's always room for yeah, improvement. Yes, and always. I, in my, in my uh, line of work, for example, certain meetings could be set that are more... Um, especially in council, in council, mm. local council, certain meetings could be set that are more adaptable for a, a, a mother with children. I mean, uh, you can say there aren't too many local female local councillors at this point, especially one with small children. Mm. So the infrastructure there, a lot of meetings are not set around mm. a, a convenient time. So you know, and, and because those arenas have been predominantly men, is that how these things are? And not 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 for, with any um, malice, but these things have just been set because they can happen at any time. Are yes. women doing things to change that, to uh -huh. influence that now? Do you have to be explicit about requesting those kind of changes? Yes, of course. I mean, in the beginning, to be honest, we used to, I used to go to council meetings and there used to be so much, you know, shouting and screaming and, and, and that's not the atmosphere I want to take my children in. So I tell them before, if I'm taking my kids, listen, if you don't behave when my children are here, I just get up and leave, you know? I mean, I'm trying to show the children how to interact in a mature way and then you see everyone... Eh, blah, blah. So, yeah. Well, that's a bit of a reality. My children are exposed to a lot of, of the discussions because, for example, there are times when, for example, there's, a, there's an incident of uh, a woman has been beaten, and I told you, people have turned up on my doorstep, you know, badly beaten. And Gosh. my children have opened the door and found a woman with a big black eye or somebody with a broken hand crying. So they are exposed. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're no longer shocked by it, um, but they know that it happens, mm -hmm. and they're very aware of it. And... They've heard me shouting with, uh, with the police or shouting with, you know, with the other lawyer. <laughs> Anyone. Or shouting at my Just clients shouting. because, you know, yeah. listen, get out, you know, get out. And um, so they're used to it. So that's perhaps why they don't react when, when I'm shouting. Mm. But um, so they, they are very... Really, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they are exposed to this, even the way that my husband and I argue. Because, obviously, we're lawyers. Yeah. So I don't take them to, to, um, to the place where I work. And there are very few incidents where I take them to the office because maybe perhaps one of them has a cough mm -hmm. or, you know, I don't send them to mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And um, but then there again, they'll be in a room and they'll be colouring next to my secretary and, or, you know, doing whatever it is. But mm -hmm. they're not exposed to the, the nitty-gritty. Now the two girls are old enough, for example, to know... Um, what it meant when I was working with a pot and the, the different aspects I was dealing with, obviously then putting two and two together with the abused women who used to come um, behind my door. 
because obviously being um, having five children and not going so much to the office, something had to, I had to make a system that worked. Exactly. So I had to have a little office in my in my house. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're, when we're talking about the infrastructure, then about the family network. Yours is that you're, you're home a lot, of, as you've been saying, and the children are there and you work and you make that work. And on, on that downtime then, do you, do, do you rely on your extended family for support? No, no, the children no. are all around and I make sure that they behave and generally they don't. But, um, <laughs> you know, so often, often, more often than not, I have to, you know, get up gonna, and say, switch from being a lawyer to being mummy and, mm -hmm. you know, shut up! <laughs> or be quiet. I try and do it nicely and docile and a docile man in the first. Have day. you got hand signs? I've got hand signs. Where are you? Get you. My children just as soon as I put on the phone, as soon as I put them on the phone, they turn to me and they say, Mummy, because you do. Um. You see this black thing in my hand? <laughs> it's a telephone. <laughs> I'm speaking to somebody. Stop it. Speak to me in five minutes. I'm going to read something. But they don't. No, no they don't yeah, yeah. all the time. You are their position. So yes. that is why uh, yes. you need to get away. I need to at least get away. But like I said, for me, it's always built around their needs. I take them to school, you know, I make sure. But, and then most of the time I, I, I take them back from school because I find that um, apart from the expense of sending five children oh, on yes. a bus her, there to school mm. and then back, mm. I find that that particular time is really important. Mm. For, their for the children to say what happened at school, maybe mm, something yes, went wrong, sure. yes, you know? Mm -hmm. That is when they talk, but then they yes. get home. It would, have be, it would have passed. It's the heat of the moment. Yes. But then, obviously, what I had to, to give up was the amount of income that I had coming mm, in. For sure. So, obviously, whereas perhaps in your case, you know, you have, there's more income and, um, coming in on your part. My husband always says, and it's true as a lawyer, I shouldn't be saying this. I mean, this community of Aquest, what's his is his, mm. mine, and what's mine is his. Mm. But it is, as a woman, as, as a woman who made a conscious decision to bring up her children at the cost of her mm. career, there is a pecuniary mm -hmm. consideration mm -hmm. which you lose. Mm. Because obviously having an income of so much, mm. which is obviously reduced by a substantial yeah. amount because I'm rearing my children, which I don't regret at all, but it does. There, it there does. are days when I just push it. It does. It Listen, away. you touched on a point there, mm -hmm. and I'm, I just, I'm, this is a question for all three of you. This is a question from someone, again, who's not a parent. I was recently staying, and I, it's for you as well. I was recently, <laughs> yeah, for her as well. I was recently staying uh, with a friend who is having her, has got one child, had her first child, um, has decided not to have any more. Um, but you, I, never I, I, <laughs> you never know. You never know. I was uh, very surprised, and I think it was because I was staying with her in her home, with her and her husband, and I was very surprised at the fact that there's never a point where you can switch off. You can't turn off being a mum. That's mom. No, no, you can't. And, and as individuals, and we've sort of touched on mm -hmm. it, but I kind of want to get really a little bit deeper. And for you too, um, for me as an individual, I as an individual, as a woman, need to spend time on my own. But what I notice with her is there's, she's always, always having to think about this other person. Yes. How do you, how do you make that? You must try. I'm guessing yeah. you must try to make that Mandy. time for yourself yeah, to keep um, your sanity. And what does that look like? Because I know, and we'll come to you in a second, Nikki. But you mentioned going to the office. But at a time that, where you're not working and you're uh -huh. not a mum, how do you manage that? I find that hard. How do you no, manage I need, that? I need that as well. I need that. I do. For example, my de-stressing is running. I love running. Or right. I, I have to do some. 30 minutes, I have to fit it in every day because that de-stresses me. Yeah. But you are, you're always consciously, consciously thinking about the children, always. Even when I'm running, okay, tomorrow they have this, they have that, that. Yeah. So when I get back from my run, I have to prepare this, 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 this. You know, everything like <laughs> regimented. I, I have a different, it's a bit maybe different for me because I'm a single mom as well. So I have to uh, compensate for certain other elements in the mm. life so it's consciously with me you know that um, maybe I'm not bringing them up in a traditional family which I would have loved to yeah obviously but uh, so it's a conscious um, fight in my head am I doing the right thing you know we're, mm. we're sometimes learning. it's better to be alone than to be in a yeah. situation where you yes, have agreed. you know consciously battering or you agreed, know, and you know, fighting you know. For yeah, but the, the, the children are, are living the life now because of the choices I made yes, yes you yeah. know and that's a conscious uh, it's, but then, it's, but then mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're all making I, I think for me it's the, it's the decision making for your children so even just down to 
Anything, any decision Anything. you make on behalf of your children. So we're about to pick senior school. So my daughter's about to move into senior school now. Where I decide for her to go to senior school is a big impact on her life. Where sure. I went to senior school had a big impact on my life, and I'm making that decision. Exactly. Just uh, it might seem like a really flimsy decision to other people, but no, it will no, have a big every, decision. every decision you take. Is You're doing it for another it's human being, them. Exactly. and you don't. I don't take that decision lightly, and I and that's that's what gets me more than anything. I think that 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 innate feeling of having to be responsible yes. for any decision that I'm making yes. on behalf of my children. But you know, you're always forward. making it with the best intentions. Yes. You know, so then you have to but move what if forward. I'm wrong? If you make a wrong decision, <laughs> so what? <laughs> you, you know, like you, you won't be wrong. wrong. You won't be wrong. You know, you, you have to. You have to see. You have to go on your better judgment. Mm -hmm. Make a decision. Take this decision. Obviously, after having considered it yes. properly and you know chewed on it, and then once you make the decision, it's there. If it turns out to be the wrong decision, then as a mother, you will know how to write it, and. Also, the children will also learn from the negativity because life Look is not all there. about good Look things. Look what we did there. We it's... ended up talking about the children and Trudy asked us about us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What about I play tennis. You, I play, you play tennis. tennis and you run. Yeah. And what do you do? I drink copious <laughs> amounts of alcohol. <laughs> I do that too. I do too. Well, well, I do like that. That. Okay, so that's in common. Singularly, ladies and gentlemen, we are not condoning that. <laughs> Singularly or collectively. <laughs> so you see, it must be yeah. something to do with motherhood. So yeah, I can so so assure you, it's not. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's being a woman. But perhaps. you do you, so good, that's, yeah. you do But you <laughs> find your, you find that time. So you allocate yes. that time, yes. whether it be yes. running. And plus, I go for facials. I go for a massage. I make sure. When? That, yes, when, when, they're school. Like, when, <laughs> when they're at school. When they're at school. You're working when they're at school. Yeah, no, adults every day. That's why I have to allocate. Oh. Most, most of the time, I'll be cooking, you know, by the time, because I like to make sure that they have me and my children are really finicky. And much to my husband's dismay, and he disagrees with me 100%, but I insist and I always disobey. And that's why he loves me, because I disobey. And he said, <laughs> he always says, he said, if, ever, if ever there was anything I loved about you, that you never listen to me and you just go and do your own thing, you know? <laughs> so That's anyway, a good I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so I cook, I have to cook different meals because my five children don't like the same thing. Oh, so oh I'm perpetually cooking different meals and a meal for my husband and I. So, but then I, oh, I have to think when they have their off days and I say, okay, good for them. So tomorrow it'll be pasta with tomato sauce. Everybody likes that. So I'm okay, I make it the, night, the day before and the following day I make sure that I have half a day of pampering. And this happens wow, once a month. Wee. Once oh, a month. So what's the day so after you make them something that they all have to eat, you they feel all, that no, you then they feel that I now deserve sauce. a face. The Maltese, typical Maltese, uh, the one with conserva, with yes. whatever, uh, the double concentrated tomato. Yeah, yeah. Cooking is not my problem. With conserva. Come on, my cooking show. I love cooking. <laughs> and, cooking is um, not my and no. I love cooking. And I love it when you know, I see my children eating. I mean, I just, not sorry, I, I mean, none of them are obese or anything, but I love saying, okay, Mom, what did you cook today? For example, I said, Greek pasta for chicken. And, Mom, what did you cook? A steak. And, Mom, what did you cook today? Timpana. Oh, so I make all these different things, you know, so I make a bolognese. God, and sorry. it's just, but it's, it, for me, it is so rewarding, you know, okay. I, but they take it for granted. Don't okay. think for one okay. minute that today. Because, it, cause, cause I'm, I'm, you know, I, again, as a, in my position, I'm listening to you ladies talk and you're saying that you have, <laughs> you're very different. We have a yeah. lady who likes going out and, Drinking don't, wine. Don't summarise um, me. I'm not sure. I'm going to... <laughs> they like that. Too. But, but, <laughs> um, I got I mean, I really want to know. You're talking about a lot of commitment. You're talking about a lot of, and t again to, to Jane as well. You're talking about a lot of energy going in. Mm -hmm. Nikki, uh, I'm still flabbergasted. Yeah. Tell <laughs> me, I tell me, too. is it worth it? Is it worth and it how? with the children? Yes. Is it, are children yes. enough to make that much effort and sacrifice worth yes, it? it? Yes, it is. It is. Oh, really? It is. Yeah. It is. Let me tell you, I'm, like I told but you, I was you, so selfish. I'm more concerned that we actually haven't convinced you <laughs> that that is, that no, it no, is I, worth I it. I promise you that no, I thought, I said, I mean, the fact that you could before, before I had Ali, I mean, I was so, I mean, I used to invite my friends over, and most of my friends had already had children, and I used to invite them with the premise that they didn't bring their children, because mm. children oh, irritated yes. me you like that so much. I was like that. I, was, you know, I mean, they, they bugged me silly. Yeah. And they said, I talk about their babies, and 
Oh, God. You one, know, I mean, it was so boring. One time, I, I was with my friends, and we all had little toddlers at the swings, and there was this girl with us, a sister of one of my friends. And she looks at us all panicked. Ben, come here. Leah, come here. And she looks at me. She told me, why do you have... Well, no, she told me, what is the best part of having kids? I looked at her to do when they're sleeping. So... <laughs> No, you know what I love, you know what I love, when, for example... So it's not always all, you know? No. They look angelic and they're nice when mm -hmm. they're asleep, it's true. But you know what I, what I love and what gives me the greatest, and I, even when I'm having a really bad day, when they come up to you and they hug me every day, and they say, uh, oh, they're worried about me because they mm. see that I was crying because mm. I was having a bad day. Or, and they tell me, mommy, mommy, you're the best. Mommy, thank you so much for everything. To do. This doesn't happen. No, no, no. I was going to say, is this a no. daily basis? But I have my son, Christian, who is so sweet. I mean, he's such a darling. He just, every single day, Mommy, do you need anything? Would you like me to go and pick up the shopping? Mommy, I love you. Mommy, you're so pretty. I would be looking at a dessert, like a, <laughs> I mean, like something the cat brought in. But Mommy, Mommy, you're looking so pretty. And, you know, I mean, he makes me feel so good. And, you know, even the girls, or if I'm going out in the evening, everybody stops me. Mommy, you're looking really pretty. You've got Mommy, very you know, well-trained kids. They're really yeah. sweet. And it's a good morale Mommy, booster. I love <laughs> you. I mean, that amount of love that is, you know, given back to me, because mm. I give so much, that little fleeting yes, moment yes, that's of that's appreciation true. That's true. That's true. makes that's true. it worth yeah. more than that. And, it, Jane, it's worth it? Oh, every second of it. Mm -hmm. So, briefly then, ladies, the best thing about being a working mum, Mandy, Oh, to get home to my kids after work. I love coming home to them, you know, and we all talk about our day. We prepare dinner together mostly, you know. I, I'm not a very good chef, but, <laughs> but I could do a barbecue, fish, they love We're fish. We're all going round to Nikki's house, yeah. I'll tell you after yeah. the show. <laughs> <laughs> but they do help out, so that's, that's the best. That's the best. Fine. Do you know, I, I have love, really big parties, I love it. Good. We're definitely going to Nikki's house. <laughs> yeah, best, thing, best thing about being a working mum, Nikki. The best thing about being a working mum is getting away from my children for that um, once a week or once a fortnight, feeling so fulfilled and feeling, you know, that I am Nikki. Mm. I'm not Nikki, the mummy of five kids. I'm Nikki, a family lawyer who actually has brains and actually, you know, is good in litigation, is good at what she does and will fight for her clients' rights. That is what makes me feel, um, it, when, you, when you sort of balance it out compared to the amount of, the amount of time I spend with my children, it is what, it, it's like, honestly, like I would have taken about four calmanti, because it's so relaxing going to work, you know? Yes. But again, like, contrary to what you said, I wouldn't, I would rather go somewhere with my children than go to work, you know? So, I'm, you know, I take them to the dentist, I take mm -hmm. them to the, I'm always like mm -hmm. that. It's always them. But then oh, when I'm at the office, I am, the fighter, yes. you know, the yes. strong. They are like, you know, a bit of like a jelly, you know, mummy and. Ladies, I have to say to, to all three of you, it's been an absolute. Um, oh, so nice it's, so nice it's, yes. it's, it's been, been lovely absolutely to fantastic, mm. and and. I wish you all the very best of both you, of you. Thank um, you. Um, for you to keep your sanity, Nikki, with five children. <laughs> and Who Mandy... says you haven't lost it yet? <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say? Well, we come round your house for parties as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy's coming too. I learned the book, maybe I can. There you go. There you maybe go. One you day. can barbecue and I'll make the contouring. Okay. Okay. So yeah. We're done. Thank and you get the wine. And we'll we'll just, we'll just turn That's up. That's my job. Thank you so much for coming on the show, and I really do. Thank we both wish you all the very, very best. Very nice speaking to you. Thank you very much. It was really fun. Good, good. So join us next week where we'll be speaking to some more fantastic women just like these two. Absolutely. And if you want to find more, more out about these beautiful, wonderful women or any other show that we've had on, on uh, In Demand, go on to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash In Demand TV Malta and check it all out there. This has been In Demand. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you again next week. Good night.